welcome to the 10th edition of the American Dreamer Show broadcast. Hope you all had a good week, and I guess all the little ones are getting ready for their for Santa's visit. Uh, it's going to be within four days uh, now, and I uh, wish you uh, all get what you want and give what you like, uh, give it plenty, good feeling. Um, always uh, wondered how Santa gets those big fancy cars in the driveway. You always see those commercials. <laughs> I have a question, Bill. So, as um, as a Jewish person, did you celebrate Christmas, uh, have gift giving, or did you just strictly do Hanukkah, or how did that work out? We really just lit our menorahs for mm-hmm. eight days, and all our Gentile friends had twelve days of Christmas, and we always felt <laughs> we should start again, you know, after the eight days and do another round. But so, no. so did you feel left out? And and how does Santa Claus come into all of this? Well, we never saw Mother Mommy kissing Santa Claus. Let me tell you. Like so, so the, the, did your parents be like, "Well, that Santa Claus, those are for that's for the Christians. We well, don't." <laughs> you know, it's so hard. You know, we were so inculcated in with you know your Judeo Christian beliefs and everything, and you just accepted it. We knew we just followed what we did. And, you know, we like to exchange gifts with our brethren and sisters, so it was, it was a good time of the year. A lot of times Hanukkah is right around the same time yes. as Christmas. This year it was not. No, because it's, uh, the calendar that they follow is the agrarian calendar they did 3,000 years ago. It's uh-huh. um, by the month, the moons, and, you know, the okay. season. So, But you know, that's another thing we just learned to live with. And, but, ha- and how about now? Well, I just... Follow. I had a uh, some friends over, and I cooked. I had a I okay. had a a barbecue fish dinner over here. I have a little grill in the back. And you didn't invite me or James. Well, were you celebrating Hanukkah? I would celebrate Hanukkah. I'll invite you for Christmas. You want to come over for no? For I, a, a, no, but I, I won't have ham. I, I already I what. already have plans for Christmas. I wanted to celebrate Hanukkah. You got it. Next year we're going to find out exactly when it is. Okay, and you'll stop by. I'll have it ready for you guys. All right. But I did get you a gift. John, you got me a gift. I, I did. Didn't, didn't get you anything. Oh, that doesn't matter. I don't care. Maybe I do. But anyway, I thought I'd surprise you and change a few things because I got some stuff that would be associated with the show, and some inspirational quotes that you might be able to draw from in you know future. I know you were getting ready. If you have a quote to share I, with I, us, I right? do have a quote. Okay, we'll be ready for that and. So you can get up to speed with uh, this input. On this so what, what did you get me? What is this? Well. It, it is a. It, it's a don't it's quote ca- me. Don't quote you. Oh. <laughs> what a, it, maybe I was using reverse psychology. Oh, that, that, that's, that's, almost <laughs> like, that's almost like when you in school you get a gift that's for school. You know. It's, <laughs> yeah. This is something we can use on the podcast. Okay. Well, this I is nice. So. Thank I you. I hope so. We're going to. Work with you on that. And James, I got you something. Uh, oh, well, can I read one of them? It says, oh, please, yeah. Read, go ahead. Luke, you're going to find that many of the truths we cling to depend greatly on our own point of view. And then you have a choice, I think, of who it could be, right? Jedi Master, Alec Guinness, multiple <laughs> choice Yoda, Obi-Wan <laughs> Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be, uh, we have to graduate degrees with this. Now, James, um, I got you something. If, uh, oh, you did? And I got you a card, and I know you're a peaceful kind of guy. I'll open that up there, man. Okay. Uh, is there our, our Foley artist? <laughs> okay. I think it just disintegrated the whole thing. All right. And what does it say? Let's peace. Say, peace. That wasn't peaceful. Dear James, may the peace and joy of the holiday season remain with you always. Yeah. Hope the year ahead is a great one. Number one, your good buddy, Billy. P.S. Thanks for a great job. Number one. Thank you. Okay. We have a present for you. Oh, really? It's a surprise that I just discovered. And, and, I'll, and I'll let you read it. It's a surprise to John, too. Really? Congratulations. Your podcast is now on Spotify. Which, oh, how about that? Wow, we, we've uh, we've had we have another outlet. 
Spotify. Wow. All right. We're reaching out. And, and James worked on getting my two CDs on uh, line with uh, Spreaker.com. I, and see, I see great things for 2019. God willing, yes. Well, I got myself a couple of uh, gifts. I also got you guys uh, calendars. Oh, calendars. Because, John, you have put on uh, your Facebook sunsets that you when you go out and so that i thought would be appropriate and what whenever i'm somewhere where the sun is setting i I feel obligated to break my phone out or my camera if i have it and so yeah i do enjoy sunsets well we're kindred spirits because i love sunsets i used to rate sunsets even when i was in maryland that was 30 years so this is pretty cool stuff buddy and James is a philosopher, so I gave him something along the lines of uh, psalms and things that, you know, he can draw from. Cool. And so I got something for myself. Because we, because you know, we are, oh. you know, we aren't going to get you anything. No, I was going to sort of grease can, the track. Maybe can, it's. Can I ask you? Mm-hmm. Who said that? Well, what is this? Loaded questions. Fun. No, que- no, I'm seriously asking. What is it? If you turn it over, you can see that there's. Right here in the back, they have different questions of it. It was almost like, um, uh, oh, that's the name of the game. Oh. Loaded question. Oh, I thought it was a loaded question. It, it Boy, was. talk about look looking a gift horse in the mouth, huh? Well, who said that? <laughs> <laughs> the, that's one of the questions. <laughs> All right. So, um, being a wordsmith, uh, uh-uh, I got a word of the day, and I'm going to go to. Uh, January. Uh, let's let's go to February twentieth because that's my dad's birthday, and he was recumbent recumbentious, recumbentious. Huh? Now it's Latin, and a definition: a knockout blow, knockdown. And then they give you then they give you a sentence on this. So it says the little old lady gave the purse snatcher a recumbentus that stunned both him and the witnesses. <laughs> All right. That's too big of a word. Nobody would understand the meaning. Oh, they are some biggies. They yeah. are conditoria. That's uh, originally Arabic, a, 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 <laughs> Arabic. This word passed through Latin and it, a, Italian and German before. Because it's a shop-selling confectionery, a pastry. Hmm. You know what cuneus? <laughs> Another word, C-U-N-E-U-S. Cuneus. Uh, we were in the woods, and we saw a cuneus passing by, and we almost hit it. Exactly, John. That really... <laughs> when Lily landed her grandpa a festive cuneus for his birthday, he hoped it wasn't just Swiss cheese and fun wrapping paper again, but it was. Well, I'm sorry. I see you got me a cuneus there. All right. Well, we're going <laughs> to – enough of that. But the inspiration – um, quotes that I got for each day, and I think that uh, sort of gives you an example. Well done is better than well said. That's okay. And you give but little when you give your possessions. It is when you give yourself that you truly give. And that was Cahill Gabron. Benjamin Franklin was well done is better than well said. So I'm, I'm looking to have some fun with that, maybe use it a little bit in the podcast. Um, but um, moving right along. Wait, do I get to read my? Well, we didn't do, we didn't do Oh, we, that's we, later. We, you want to get into the inspiration. It, it's a whole, it's a whole show of, oh, it's a whole, oh, that, I thought that's what this was. Sorry, I need to get up to speed here. You Sorry. missed one week and look Car- what Carry on, carry on. And karaoke. Um, well, I got something interesting, interesting to share um, and to reach out with, because um, just when I thought I was coming back to Earth after the America's Got Talent audition, I had a really nice build-up, uh, specific, special bonding with with some of the students that I was uh, teaching on last Friday. We recorded uh, last Thursday, so it was the day after. So I. You know, it wasn't an event yet, but um, I was at a a Davidson Middle School here in Tampa, 6th, 7th, and 8th grades. Oh, wow. That could be a rough crowd. Yes, and it always is. But uh, um, I was teaching music. That was my choice. I pick uh, subjects. I do all subjects and grades, but this was music. And we talked about it. I said, well, why don't I bring my guitar? 
and it just happened. And I did. And uh, so I uh, was wearing my John Denver attire with a cowboy hat. You wore that to school. <laughs> <laughs> with my guitar, really, I, you know, bring in uh, my. Uh, so you walk onto the campus, is everybody like looking at you, like, "What's this?" Not only it, clown but doing. <laughs> the assistant principal saw me, and she was. Uh, she gave her approval. I, I gave okay. her my credentials, and she right. gave me her approval. And she said um, that it's, it was really static that somebody would go through all that effort to help. And it was, she was very appreciative. Yeah. Okay. Almost said that she said, well, she did. She said she was going to stop by one of the classes because I said I was going to play. But if she did, I really didn't see. I was too busy teaching and singing. And right. But um, it was an amazing event, John. And I put it on my Facebook, www.williams.zephacar. And I had some pictures that had to be very sort of muddy because you can't take pictures of, uh, you know, when you're. And why did you do it? <laughs> well, one of it was because the kids really just grooved with it. I was singing, um, like, Take Me Home, Country Roads, and uh, Sunshine on My Shoulders. Okay. And and a lot of the students didn't even know who John Denver was. Did, were they familiar with the song? But they were familiar yeah. with the song. And then they um, took their... Um, what happened was they, they, they wanted to be part of this experience. So they, they took their cell phones and they l lowered the lights. You know, they, they had their flash on the, on the phone. And um, so that, uh, that was an experience, and they really appreciate it. And one student, unbeknownst to him that I was on the audition for America's Got Talent, he said, Wow, you should be on America's Got Talent. How do you, I mean, well, maybe you will be. Yeah, who knows? So, anyway, I want to um, get into the music musical segment. And, um, you know, it, it's something when you're um, trying to pick out, you don't have to worry about picking out these songs, John. No, I, I just show up. I know, and you're <laughs> very encouraging. And I bring chicken. Exactly. We have a little feast after. So, um, you know, I have some foreboding and queasiness in picking out the songs. Uh, the second one easily um, was easy because James inspired us. You know, after we do our segments in the songs, he's always humming the songs. And for a week, I hear these songs like uh, Blowing in the Wind right, and, right, uh, right. you know, uh, Take Me Home, Country Road. So um, he was humming this song and was like turned around as fair play. Okay. It was called uh, If I Had a Hammer. If I Had a Hammer? Yes. Would you hammer in the morning? I'm going to hammer in the evening and all over the slant. Okay. But the thing is, that's going to be the second song because uh, the song I wanted to do was John Denver and I got torn between meaningful songs that I always like to capture that for dreamers and possibly reach out <laughs> i'm getting some uh, guidance here i'm out reaching out and touching someone there's a hammer so yeah with a hammer um and while i was wondering whether this with this feel good giving holiday season with a lot of love floating around i decided to go with that because we can always do the motivational message Right. For next time. James really wants you to start playing. I know. He really enjoys. Uh, so this is John Denver's. The name of the song is For Baby. And also in parentheses, For Bobby. It's caring about somebody that you feel very strongly for. Okay. And know that you're the best thing for that person since sliced bread. <laughs> How did that saying get started? Best thing you're since sliced that, bread. John. I'm gonna, you're, yeah. You're gonna do that. Yeah. So, being that as it may, I. Well, am, wait. Now you're gonna play the hammer song, or are you playing? No, the we're playing Denver? John Denver's. Well, what about the hammer song? That's later. Oh, gotcha. All right. All right. I'm, con I'm so confused. I am confused too. We're all. We're all and I'm looking for. Um, oh, there's the paper ruffling. Oh, the paper ruffling, everybody. Rustling, rustling, rustling. 
Ruffling? Yeah. Like leaves rustling. Ruff- is it ruffling well, or rustling? Oh, I'm so glad ruffling. you said trees because this song has trees to do. But I have to have some of my ma- magic potion. Oh, magic potion. What is it? What's what, in your magic potion? Like tea and honey or something? Yeah, well, this has some special tea because it says thro- throat coat. Oh. Would you believe that's the name of the tea? Okay. And um, it's, you know, herbal stuff. So our program director really wants you to play this song. Okay. Um. So this is John Denver. You know, you just got a uh, promotion, the program director, James. <laughs> it's a beautiful song about feelings, about how you can love somebody. Well, that doesn't make any. That's not so unusual. But you could love somebody and love them more than anybody can. That's where it gets different. I'll walk in the rain by your side I'll cling to the warmth of your hands I'll do anything to keep you satisfied And I'll love you more than anybody can and the wind will whisper your name to me little birds will sing along in time and leaves will bow down when you walk by and morning bells will chime and the wind will whisper your name to me little birds will sing along in time and the leaves will bow down when you walk by and morning bells will chime I'll be there when you're feeling down to kiss away the tears if you cry I'll share with you All the happiness I found A reflection of the love in your eyes And I'll sing you the song of the rainbow I'll whisper of the joy that is mine And the leaves will bow down when you walk by and morning bells will chime I'll walk in the rain by your side I'll cling to the warmth of your tiny hands I'll do anything to help you understand And I'll love you more than anybody can And the wind will whisper your name to me Little birds will sing along in time And the leaves will bow down When you walk by And morning bells will chime
Is that a John Denver song also? Yes. H.J. Dusseldorf. Is that a John Denver song? Dusseldorf. Remember? You told me. Yes. Yeah, yes, that, yes, exactly. Dussel, Dusseldorf. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> was German. Uh, or somewhere in that. I mean, he had a lot of different uh, kind of... If he did the DNA, they, you know, like that uh, genealogy, they find a lot of places he was... I, I found out uh, how the saying... Um, the best thing since sliced bread came up, but it's too long for me to go through. Okay. But it's it's basically just like it was. I mean, it was back in the in the days where uh, in the eighteen hundreds when bread came out, um, it wasn't sliced, and then somebody had a bread slicer and they started slicing the bread. But the Wonder Bread, of course, was the first company that uh, sliced bread and they commercialized it, and uh, hence the uh, the saying. Well, you know, John, when um, you 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 missed last week, um, I had a couple of. Uh, you keep telling me I missed last week, and uh, I, I feel well, like I missed something. Not really. No. Um, but you know what I wanted to to share with you was that I was telling people something with the holidays. It worked for me. We get. So many receipts. You go to the grocery store, supermarket, um, well, that's supposed to be department stores, you know. My dad and I picked up on that, would take the receipt and he would look at it. He would even sit down at a bench at Publix and look to make sure, there, you know, that everything was copacetic. All, all your bogos got, you know, yes, deducted. You, got, you yeah. didn't get bogus bogos. Right, because <laughs> nothing worse than buying bogos and not getting and a getting bogo. Your mo- yes. It's like, I wouldn't have bought that if it wasn't a bogo. Right. You know, so that's why I was saying this was almost like sliced bread. You, 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 you gave me sliced bread last week. You were trying with, uh, when you were here, about my, it worked for me. So anyway, but I have in front of me my new... Poem. Oh. Ode to December. Okay. And every month I have a little poem that's part of the newsletter, Joe's Lifelong Legacy, and it'll be also the American Dreamer book. That's also my domain, American Dreamer book. So we're going to have that integrated. AmericanDreamerBook.com? Yes. Right. It'd be cool. And then also tied in with it work for me. So... Uh, I just put the finishing touches on my Ode to December, and you have been a very good critic, critique, and I'd like to, uh, and expletives deleted after it. <laughs> okay, so this is Ode to December. I'm going to be finishing up my newsletter this weekend, so it'll go with a, you know, his lifelong legacy, and uh, it worked for me. Ode to December. It is a month to remember. It's the beginning of the end. If that doesn't sound so good, let's say it's full of wondrous things you will send. And equally important, also wondrous things that people bring. It's the end of some things good, but the start of things that will be better. So think of December as an invitation of initiations and a start of originations around the corner. If you look at it as a circle, this is not the end, as it just starts again. Have fun with the holidays, and let's not get stressed. (laughs) Strafed. (laughs) Let's not get stressed, but bend. So let's say, have fun with the holidays, and let's not get stressed, but bend. Because at the end of the month, we will be ushering in a new year that's on the way. New feelings, new inconceivable things to look toward. Not just throw out the old, but make it bold. Let the lights of the holiday brighten our lives and say, Adieu, not just to a month or year that ends, but one that we'll remember for new beginnings, the goals as we press onward forward. End. Okay. Uh, that was, you wrote that, huh? Were you like in bed thinking about this? And I'm everywhere. I'm, I'm, you know, my mind is a very fertile all, thing. Your mind's all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you, isn't that one telling grace and saying grace? Okay. 
So, as long as my voice is still intact, okay, we're going to do the second song. And James, as I said, was inspirational, and he's humming the song, and it really gets the juices flowing. And yeah, I was all ready for it, like the last song, and now. And uh, and what did you think? Was that you? You're not ready now. I'm ready. Okay. All right, so this is, and you can check on this stuff. Um, this was recorded by uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary. That's what I thought. Yeah, Peter, Paul, and Mary. They they did uh, Puff the Magic Dragon, too, uh, right? We're not going there, John. No? Maybe you're going there, but <laughs> I, I haven't seen any smoke yet. Uh. <laughs> okay, so I am just uh, setting up here because that's part of what I do, and I do a lot of setting up. You got a lot of setting up. Oh, God in heaven. You need a page turner. I need more than a page turner, let me tell you. All right. James is really on a tear. He's on a tear. Okay. We got 16 minutes. We're good. 18. All right. All right. So I think with today's time and place and day and age, this song I was really excited about doing, if I can do it as good or not as good, but almost. So this is If I Had a Hammer... And I'm going to do it right now. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. I'd hammer in the evening all over this land. I'd hammer out danger. I'd hammer out warning I'd hammer out love Between my brothers and my sisters All over this land If I had a bell I'd ring it in the morning I'd ring it in the evening all over this land I'd hammer out danger I'd hammer out warning I'd hammer out love between my brothers and my sisters All over this land If I had a song, I'd sing it in the morning, I'd sing it in the evening, all over this world, I'd hammer out danger, I'd hammer out warning, I'd hammer out love between my brothers and my sisters. All over this land Well, I've got a hammer And I've got a bell And I've got a song to sing All over this land It's a hammer of justice it's a bell of freedom It's a song about love between my brothers and my sisters All over this land It's a hammer of justice It's the bell of freedom It's a song about Love between my brothers and my sisters All over this land We need a lot of love All over this land Well, wow. I got into that, huh? Yeah, let's uh, let's, let's hammer. it down a little. Let's bit. hammer some things. Well, someone had a hammer. I can't believe the props in this. <laughs> Where'd that hammer studio. come from? Is that how the sword got inspired? 
Oh, How God. Does, it could be the judge. Oh, here comes the judge. <laughs> okay. Well, we got those songs out of the way. So, John. Yeah. We're getting into our inspirational quotes. Ah, yes. And why don't you start off this? No, why don't you start off and then oh. I'll join in. Okay. We can do that. Because uh, your, your quotes are better than mine, probably. No, they're not. No? Oh, not really. I just do a little investigation. Mm-hmm. But now that you've got your book on... Oh, yeah. Quote me. I'm going to be the quote man. (laughs) I like it. I like it. Well, I just went into, you know, I just like you Google stuff and we can get answers pretty quick. So these are dreamer quotes because I want to try to get into that mode. And we're going to start the new year. We're going to have a little meeting of the minds to let our folks know about how we're going to prepare for the new year. But. This is a quote from Ray Bradbury. I met Ray Bradbury. Wow. I mean, this is so amazing. James. I met Ray. I, it, was, uh, it was out in California, and uh, we were um, basically getting the set ready for him. Lighting Tell him, him what the set was. Well, it's just basically he was doing a it was a, a doing a talk at UCSD. It wasn't Star Trek. No, no, no. It was <laughs> it was a, it was a, it was a talk he was doing um, at UCSD, and he was. Um, Lighting up, we were lighting up the set for him, and basically I was sitting in his spot um, where he was going to be sitting. Okay, okay. And, and he and he walked out and he said, "Hey, you're not Ray Bradbury." <laughs> <laughs> he said that to me. <laughs> it was awesome, <laughs> beautiful. I love that. That that's better than a quote. But anyway, this was a from Star Trek and Fahrenheit four fifty one. Mm-hmm. He was a great mind for science fiction and the future. So he said. Love what you do and do what you love. Don't listen to anyone else who tells you not to do it. You do what you want, what you love. Imagination should be the center of your life. I like that. That's possibly the best quote you've read so far. Well, then I just quit right now. I ain't getting it any better, (laughs) right? Okay, well, this one is from Ethan Hawke, the hottest state. I don't know. He said, don't you find it odd... And she continued that when you're a kid, everyone, all the world encourages you to follow your dreams. But when you're older, everyone, somehow they act offended by, even if you try. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Okay. And um, this is from Steve Maraboli, Life, the Truth, and Being Free. People who lack the clarity, courage, or determination to follow their own dreams will often Find ways to discourage yours. Live your truth and don't ever stop. Okay, here's a shorty. Wait, I have I have oh, something. That goes in there? Well, I have something that goes with that. All right, I like to hear it. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall shall make you mad. Is that from one of your books that I get? <laughs> no, I just it's. A, I think I saw that. Yeah, uh, that that is. Yeah. It's a good one. Huh? Like the, the mad, truth will make you mad. Like the Mad Hatter. Yeah. All right, well, if you're waiting until you feel talented to n- enough to make it, you'll never make it. <laughs> that was Chris Jammy and Helology. Here's another one. Hence this podcast. Of course. <laughs> I didn't want to wait any longer. Nope. And I hope everybody realizes they don't have to wait any longer either. Okay. Um, this is Billy Joel, one of my favorites. I don't have my cup. We have. I have my love, peace, hope, faith cup that I'm using today because that's sort of the holiday season in in spirit here. But Billy Joel said, you can get what you want or you can just get old. That's from uh, scenes from an Italian restaurant, I think. Mm. No, maybe not. I have to Google that and find out. Get what you want. You can... If you want. At the Vienna. Event. Vienna. Yeah. That's Vienna. Beautiful. Vienna waits for you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So here's a, a, a Shannon Thompson second before sunrise. Seconds before. Remember how far you've come and you won't have to rely on a destiny for your future. It will come on your own. It will come on your own. All right, one last one. Uh, Aaron Luritus. There is a strange comfort in knowing that no matter what happens today, the sun will rise tomorrow. I have one more. I was going to save it for next week, but I'll just read it now. Just chime in, John. Aim for the moon. If you miss, you may hit a star. <sighs> don't Don't hit me. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> this was three dollars at um, at um, uh, Big Lots, 
and it was follow your dreams, especially if, especially if they're on their way to happy hour. <laughs> okay. And I, I don't want to blow the whole thing because it's a, just... Um, you need to save those for... Yes, yeah. for special times and yep. places. So I'll just do one more. Dream big or medium or whatever. It's your dream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's good. All right. We're moving right along here, Bud and Matt. Well, now it's time to turn to Joe Baby. Joe Baby. Okay. I'm going to tell you a story about my dad. I don't think it's in the book. My dad always wanted to play a guitar. And I have the guitar that I got for him when he retired. But, cause, you know. but I remember we were living in Maryland, and they were in a, a high-rise apartment. And they were beautiful people, friends that they met there to, for their whole life. And um, so I had gotten a guitar from an old girlfriend's brother, and it it didn't work that good. <laughs> Matter of fact, we put silk flowers in it and hung it on a wall. <laughs> you could imagine. But it had strings in his strum. So my dad wanted to borrow it. So he and my mom got dressed up. Uh, it was, um, I think, a costume party. They were hippies uh, back in the 70s. And uh, so my mom had pictures of that, and he was... Uh, he was a hippie, and he had the guitar. And he was strumming it, and they met in their family, you know, what do they call it, club room downstairs, you know. And he's singing, and everybody, you know, he's strumming, I should say. He's strumming. He couldn't play a lick, right? Oh, no. <laughs> so, and the party ended, and I, re- I remember how it turned out. that So they were going upstairs to my folks for after, you know, so. And uh, they all get in the elevator, and they're strumming, and they're singing, you know. Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett. <laughs> He's just randomly <laughs> hitting chords. <laughs> and, and, and they say, Joe, where, where did you learn how to play the guitar? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so when he retired, he really wanted a guitar. And um, I went to a, a pawn shop. I got a really nice guitar. It turned out it was nicer than the one I had. And um, so I, he signed up for uh, adult education classes in the time he retired. So he went to the classes. And I think he was like two generations older than, you know, these kids were like in high school. Well, this had been like the 80s, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Actually, you know what? They left for Florida in 76. So it was the early 70s, you know, he retired. Okay. He he retired. Yeah, he retired. So it was right around that time. And uh, so... uh, I, I remember him going to the classes, and he, he was starting to get into it, but it just he had more things that he was had to do. And But uh, one of the things that uh, he told me, he said, you know, because I, t- I had to tune the guitar. He said, you know, Bill, this guitar teacher, she said, I had the best tuned guitar. <laughs> so that was one of the better for many of that. So um, um, so we got that song out of the I mean, that story out of the way. Here, we take my guitar. Thank you very much, Jim. And uh, John, um, I need to get. What can I do for you, Bill? America, Scott. <laughs> what is going on here? American Dreamer. We can never have dead silence on never, this podcast. Never. Okay. So, as I said, one of the um, books that I, well, the calendars that I got was Words. And um, I really owe my father and mother, too, because she, she would play Scrabble every week with her friends when we lived on Long Island. And that sort of got us involved with, you know, uh, words and wordology and stuff. But my dad, and I, I referenced uh, when he started when he was growing up in uh, New York, how he would read just voraciously on his words you know he we used him as a, a dictionary when we played scrabble that's how amazing his vocabulary was but it just didn't happen it just didn't happen um if you go to uh page 397 in the book read along with us audience okay okay 
I found this book in my collection of dad that I have my my house is a live a museum and a library. It was Carl Sagan's, and he was a great astronomer scientist called Contact. That was his book about possibly life and the universe, galaxy. And I open the book, and I see there's about 20 words. You see those words there in the... Yes. And it's not just the words. He put the page number in the book where, and he would look at it. So I, I had it it, E-T-I-O-L-A-T-E-D, pale and drawn out due to a lack of light. Brachiatine, B-R-A-C-H-I-A-T-I-N-G, moving by your arms to swing from branch to branch. Simulacrum, S-I-M-U-L-A-C-R-U-M, an unsatisfactory imitation or substitute. Well, the idea that he would write the words down in the you know, opening of the book with the page number. It's just mind blowing. You know, that's how so, you get So a, these were these were words that he wanted to he just, learn? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And he wrote down where the page number he wrote it is so you would have it. So okay. if you go to the book and I'll show you I'll I'll bring the next time and you know, where, where those words. But if you go to page uh, three sixty nine and this is 1998, so he was, um, I guess in his 80s and 90s, he, he did crossword puzzles. And he wrote that, um, and there's a, one on, uh, this was Saturday, August 1st, 1998. You see where that reference is? Yes. I mean, so here, these are the things that he kept, he said. And uh, Thelma and I would regularly do crossword puzzles, and I saved the particular crossword puzzle because it had a reference to um, his mother-in-law's, Bessie, Harry Truman's wife, and that was, Bessie was uh, my mother's wife. So these are commentaries of how to develop your special gifts or instinct. It takes time and a little effort. And we're hoping that we can have a little bit of a twist and influence to make that difference. That's why we're here. And John, that's why you're here. And James that's, is... I was wondering why I was here. Now I know. Well, only just the scratching the surface because James is going to figure out why he's here too. <laughs> and then we're going to have a big bonanza. But please, everybody, have a blessed holiday. Do something good for yourself and the people that are around you, the people you love. And we'll be back, God willing, for the new year, 2019. Ooh. Yes, we have a lot of wonderful things. We have wonderful guests. I can't wait to have guests to join us, and people can call in because James at the controls, he's like, he's like uh, Captain Kirk, <laughs> <laughs> Starship Enterprise man. He is ready to go. We're going to go to another galaxy with him at the controls. Does that make me uh, Sulu? Or yeah, well, you want to be Sulu? Uh, you can be whoever you want. Sure. <laughs> or Spock? <laughs> Maybe I'll be Spock. Oh, no. I... <laughs> you wanted to be Spock? <laughs> anyway, don't worry about it. We have a good control crew here for the con, uh, the uh, Constellation Enterprise, and we're ready to go, blasting off. But please have a safe and healthy and happy holiday, and we're going to be back full, full tilt. And um, uh, I'm going to be really anxious for you to meet some of the people that have been inspirational in my life. And we're going to share this, and, and you can bring people, too, with you. We'd like to have you uh, join in because this is one big happy family. We're a family of man and women. And thank you again. God bless. May all your blessings be wonderful, and you share them. Thank you. This is Bill Sefakar, turning your dreams into reality. God bless. <laughs>